Mr. Carlson? Yes. There's someone here to see you. Uh, not today. Oh, he's been here quite a while. Well, no one should have to wait. Send him away. He's written you two letters. I don't read my mail. He seems rather nice. We're all nice, Jennifer. I would like you to see him. Okay. She had never stopped. Dr. Helliers, this is Mr. Carlson. Thank you. Mr. Carlson? Ah, uh, Dr. Is it? Yes. Thank you for seeing me. I know how busy you must be. Oh, gosh, yeah. It just never stops here. Uh, let me uh, pull up a chair for you. Oh, uh, that's all right. I'll just sit over here. Oh, fine, fine. Well, uh, what is it that I can do for you, Doctor? Well, I hope you've had a chance to read my letters. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, medical things, medical stuff. Uh, oh, <laughs> no. No, I'm a doctor of divinity, a preacher. Really? Oh, of course. Yeah, only oh, the medical people were in here yesterday. <laughs> well, if, if you read my letters, perhaps you know that I am the head of the Tri-Faith Broadcasting Advisory Committee here in Cincinnati. Oh, yeah, that uh, Tri-Faith Broadcasting thing there, yeah. <laughs> well, in that case, you may have heard that we have formed a media task force called CURB, C-U-R-B. CURB? It stands for Clean Up Radio Broadcasting. <laughs> Clean up radio broadcast. Yes, and you're the very first station we're contacting in the Cincinnati area. Oh, that's great. <laughs> What's that? My heart, I think. KRP Got kind of tired of packing and unpacking From town to town, up and down the dial Maybe you and me were never meant to be Just maybe think of me once in a while I'm at WKRP in Cincinnati Mr. Carlson, what we at Curb would like to do is to work with your station by helping you in any way that we can in bringing wholesome, life-affirming programming to what are, in fact, the public airwaves. Yes. Well, we, we'll take all the help we can get. I mean, you know, we're just a little bitty station. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Why, uh, two of your DJs, a Dr. Fever and a, a Mr. Flytrap, I believe, have a very strong following. You see, you seem to know quite a little bit about our station. I sure do. We've asked our membership, 3,000 Christians in Cincinnati alone, to monitor your broadcasts. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> uh, do you mind if I uh, bring up something that we've noticed about your station? Oh, not at all, no. Well, here's a list of uh, records that have played on your station recently. Now, all of them contain sexually suggestive, if not obscene, lyrics. <laughs> Really? Well, you can see for yourself. Uh, the offensive words are typed off on the side here. <coughs> oh, my. Uh, I, I, I didn't know. Uh, oh, good. Of course, you see, I don't listen to the station uh, too often. <laughs> to tell the truth, you know, I... Uh, really? Uh, I, I don't care for rock and roll too much. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you called me Bob. Okay, Bob, <laughs> and I'm, I'm Arthur. Oh. Well, Arthur, what do you think about this? Oh, I think this is bad. Uh, frankly, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I, I, I should talk to my employees about this. Do you think you can uh, get them to stop playing these records? You mean just stop them all, all, all together? Yes. Oh, well, uh, I... <laughs> I suppose I should. Praise the Lord. What? I said, praise the Lord. Oh. I think I found myself another Christian here today. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes, I, I, I am. Well, I mean, I, I try to be. <laughs> of course, sometimes I don't do quite as well as I should, but fortunately, blessed are those who are weak in spirit. <laughs> and blessed are those who are righteous in his name. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, righteous <laughs> and weak. <laughs> you sure, <laughs> sure came to the right guy. <laughs> 
So remember, when you're looking for the live bait fish love most, look for red wigglers. Red wigglers. I've seen it. Would you shut that thing off, though? Oh, yeah, sure. So, Mr. Carlson, uh, what do you got in mind? Well, I'm just going to ask you fellas not to play those songs anymore. Yeah, well, you realize, of course, that some of these songs are the biggest hits of the year. And some of them are rock and roll classics. I know that, but I still say these lyrics are dirty. No offense, A.C., but beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, well, this eye has beheld this, and I don't see anything there that's beautiful. Ah, uh, half the time you can't even hear the lyrics. Well, these people, these curb monitors, they figured out the lyrics. They sure did. Boy, I can see him now, huddled there in the corner of the church late at night, just playing every record slower and slower. And suddenly, there's a naughty word! This means that you're not gonna cooperate with me on this, huh? No, it means I'm not gonna cooperate with Curb on this. Venus? Well, Mr. Carlson, I think about the lyrics sometimes. Oh, come on, man. Well, man, you've seen the list. I mean, they don't even have the choice ones. They're a lot more worse than that. May I say something? Sure. All my life, I have seen these kind of people at work. My aunt and uncle were like this, and I'm here to tell you, I have never seen a group of people who were so sure they were right about everything and so sure everybody else was wrong. Yeah, listen, Dr. Bob Hollyer isn't like that. Yeah, well, maybe, but that man did not come in here and say, we don't like this music, so we're not going to listen to your station anymore. What he said was, we don't like this music. We don't want other people to listen to it anymore. Huh? There's a difference there. I call that censorship. Doc, I knew somebody was going to use that word. What else would you call it? This is a portion of the public expressing themselves. What are we supposed to do, ignore it? We already censor ourselves. Well, we can't be doing a good job because we're playing those records. I thought these people were going after TV. Why don't they go after TV and leave us alone? Probably because they want to practice on a couple of guppies before they go after the whale. <laughs> what are you going to do about the list? I'm just going to ask you fellas not to play those songs anymore. Just like that? Yeah, I guess so. Just like that. Thanks, fellas. Mr. Carlson? Yeah? Uh, what happens if uh, we play some other song that these people decide they don't like? I don't know. <laughs> I do. We'll get a new list. And after that, another one. And after that, another one. And after that, another one. Jennifer? Some of the employees have stopped speaking to me. Now, normally, that'd be playing right into my hands. The past few days, I've perceived a sense of disapproval, if not outright loathing. What should tell them to knock it off? Oh, Mr. Carlson, I'm sorry. It's all my fault. I never should have let Dr. Bob Halliers in here. Well, what was I supposed to do? Say no? I mean, he had us dead to rights. I find some of those records offensive myself. I think there's a larger question here. What's that? Maybe this has something to do with it. It's another letter from Curb, as predicted. Well, what does that say? Let's see. Ah, it's a letter of commendation. Yeah? You're Curb's Broadcasting Executive of the Month. Really? Oh, and here's another list of records. Curb's Top 40 Hit List. I suppose that's a play on words. <laughs> Yeah, but what about all the sex on TV, huh? What sex? I mean, every night I go home and just sit there waiting on it. <laughs> all I ever see are car crashes. I was visiting my sister over the holidays. She's got two little girls, five and nine. I saw them sitting in front of a television set at 8 o'clock watching adults argue about abortion. Now, is that right? Well, they talk about the same subject on the 6 o'clock news. Besides, I think kids are a lot smarter than we give them credit for. No, they're not. When I was a kid, I didn't know anything. <laughs> I know you're all probably wondering what I think about this curb business. It's been driving us crazy, Les. <laughs> yes, well, in a situation like this, I always ask myself, what would my hero, Edward R. Murrow, think? <laughs> and I think that Ed would think that this was censorship. Then I think about what my other hero, General George Patton, would think. <laughs> and I think that George would think that radio and television ought to be cleaned up. 
Bet if he were alive today, he'd take two armored cavalry divisions into Hollywood and knock all those liberal pinheads into the Pacific. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm a very confused man. <laughs> and when I get confused, I watch TV. <laughs> Television is never confusing. It's all so simple somehow. <laughs> Andy, I guess you guys were right. Here's another curb list. Well, there must be some mistake here. There's songs on this list that we haven't even played yet. Yeah, I know. It's kind of a list in general. No, it's kind of censorship before the fact. I guess you could say that. Well, this is where we get off Dr. Bob's train. Come on, we've got to. We cannot let him program this station. Now, can we? No. Good. Why don't you let me go talk with him? No. No, I'll go talk with him. I'm still the station manager. Knock those liberal pinheads in the river, Mr. Carlson. <laughs> Wrong hero, Les. <laughs> oh. Arthur, how are you? I'm fine, Bob. <laughs> Have a seat. Thank you. I, uh, well, got your new list. As long as they keep making records like that, we have to keep coming up with new lists. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I have something I'd, I'd like to say. Uh, you know, as a private businessman, I feel a little foolish taking orders from a religious group. To me, it seems, well, un-American somehow. I understand that, Arthur. You do? Well, sure I do. But I think this is really democracy in action. Now, the people I represent deserve the right to speak out, don't they? Oh, yeah, sure. But I don't think that, you know, one small group of people should have so much power that they can dictate what's on radio or television. But a small group of people already dictates what gets on the airwaves. Huh? Well, you and your program director decide what records to play. That's just two men. And on the television networks, Arthur, a group of people I can count on my fingers decide what type of shows get on the air. And that's for the whole country. Is that right? Well, See, I agree with you. I don't think that a small group should decide for everybody. And that's what we're fighting here. Well, I see what you're saying, but... Uh, boy, that's a confusing question. It's really very simple, Arthur. Now, if somebody has the right to make a picture, let's say, about some unspeakable bloody horror, which they do make, and just to make money, then I should have the right to say, I don't like that kind of movie. And if they have the right to put that movie in my local theater, well, I should have the right to try and get it out of my local theater. How are you gonna do that? Well, very reluctantly, we would uh, use the one tool that seems to get any action, economic boycott. Oh. Well, what would you do to us if we played some of those songs on that list? Well, we'd have no choice but to go to your advertisers. But, Arthur, why play any of those records? They're all obscene. Uh, I have one of my disc jockeys, uh, Dr. Johnny Fever, gave me the lyrics to a song. He wants to know if you'd let him play that song on the air. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us, only sky. Nothing to kill or die for, and no religion, too. Imagine no possessions. <laughs> Imagine all the people sharing all the world. <laughs> that sounds like communism to me. <laughs> if there's no heaven, no religion. And I assume, no God. There's not an obscene word in here. Not the way I see it. Let's go on your list. Arthur, this is typical of the kind of secular, liberal, humanist point of view that gluts our airwaves. 
Yeah, but we're not talking obscenities here anymore, Bob. We're talking about ideas, political and philosophical ideas. First you censor a word, and then you censor the ideas. But the idea is man-centered, not God-centered. Man is an animal. The Bible tells us to put our reliance in God, not in our fellow mortals. Arthur, this song says there's no heaven. Ah. No, it says just imagine there's no heaven. That's blasphemy. On the list or not? I have no choice but to say on. That decision was made by one man. But, Arthur, if you could only see... Oh, Bob. I'm sorry, but so long. All right. And what do we replace it with? Well, where the commercial was, drop in the American Heart Association spot. Oh, uh, but then we'd be coming out of a lung association spot and going directly into a heart association spot. Oh. Uh, well, maybe we could separate them with a forest fire. <laughs> OK. Hey, Guy. Crispy Treat Pizzeria just canceled everything. Didn't you go down and talk to him personally? For an hour and on my knees. And I got to say, it's not the cleanest place in the world down there either. <laughs> now, I'm really scared, big guy. I mean, we're losing everything. Well, what reasons did they give? They said there was no reasons, but you know better than that. Mr. Carlson, Harvey Green is here to see you. Harvey? Mm -hmm. We'll send him in. Wait, you're not going to see him. Don't, don't because, because he'll just cancel his business. Uh, Bailey, will you excuse me, please? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, Mr. Green. Hello, Miss Bailey. <laughs> How's the worm business? The same. Always the same. <laughs> well, <laughs> good. <laughs> well, uh, how you doing, Harvey? How's everything down there at Red Wiggler? Can't talk now. Let's just say everything is fine. Leave it that long. <laughs> how are you, Harvey? Arthur, uh, a minister came to see me. Dr. Bob Hallier, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how did you get in trouble with a fellow like that? Yeah, that's a long story. He says you're not doing right, Arthur. He says you play songs that are bad for the kids. I know, I know. Of course, that's what they used to say about the music when, when we were kids. <laughs> Remember the jitterbug? <laughs> Remember the jitterbug was, was going to turn us all into drug fiends? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> but Arthur... This fella came with a couple of other ministers. They said they represented thousands of people, and every one of those people would tell other people not to buy my red wigglers, and so on and so forth. You see, Arthur, I'm trying to sell the business. My sons don't want to come in. They don't think worms are interesting enough. They want to pursue careers in modern dance. <laughs> Both of them. How's that for luck? <laughs> Harvey, how about a cup of coffee? No, no, no thanks, Arthur. Arthur, I'm sorry, but I don't think I can stand a, a boycott of my product right now. I understand. I mean, with the way the economy is and everything, I, I can't even get a loan. And a lot of religious people fish. Oh, my can't I know? And there's no sense in all of us going down the drain. You, uh, you lost a lot of, a lot of business, yeah. Arthur? No, I'm doing all right. <laughs> you know, uh, you know what I think? What? I think you made a wise business decision. You know, people who listen to rock and roll, they don't. They don't buy a lot of worms. Well, you know, Arthur, maybe it's God's way of, of trying to tell us something. You told me, told me once you didn't like the radio business too much. And I'm certainly getting tired of the worm business, so why don't we let Dr. What's his name, Dr. Bob, go ahead and put us out of business. And the two of us can move to Florida and starve to death. <laughs> 
Thanks a lot, Harvey. You don't mind if I think about that, do you? Give it some thought. <laughs> Everybody's doing it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Arthur, I'm sorry. I feel like a coward. And I am ashamed. Well, don't be. Oh. Uh, hello, Mr. Travis. Uh, how you doing, Harvey? Uh, goodbye, Mr. Travis. Arthur? Forgive me. Red Wigglers, too. Yeah. Red Wigglers, too. All right. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get every radio station in Cincinnati together and we're gonna fight this guy. Now, we either hang together or we're gonna hang separately. We're gonna go to the press. We're gonna go to our listeners, the people who really support us, not a bunch of religious nuts. Andy, they are not nuts. What did we do? Did we build up this business so I can get cut down just like that? Is that what all that hard work was for? <laughs> What are you doing? Playing computer baseball. Why? Because, Andy, recently this is one of the few joys I've had in life. Mr. Carlson? What? Huh? Would you want to see Dr. Bob Halliers? He's got his nerve in coming here. You tell him to go to hell. Andy, now that man is a man of God, and I'm not going to have you talking like this. Send him in, John. You like this guy. Thank you. Hello, Arthur. Bob. Andy. This is Dr. Hollier. Hi. Andy's my program director. Yeah, that's right. I'm the program director. My job is to uh, program the music I think our listeners would like to hear. If I'm wrong, our ratings go down and I get fired. It's called the free enterprise system and it works pretty <clears throat> well. <clears throat> well, some people don't like the records you program. They fight back. It's called a democracy and it works pretty well. It's called censorship. And you could call it a rose if you like, but it still stinks. Andy, please. Arthur, I, I'm truly sorry that we ended up on opposite sides of this. Well, thank you, Bob. But you know, aside from stirring a whole lot of people up and making an old man feel like a coward, I'll be darned if I can figure out anything else that's been accomplished by all this. Well, a lot could be accomplished, Arthur. If you'd come on over to God's side. I'm not sure that Giving up my freedom of decision is God's side. Well, that's a matter of opinion. Yeah. And I, I don't want to argue the point any further. But I would like to uh, express one other thought that occurs to me. Surely. Bob, watch out for those broadcasters that cave in to your pressure. Because principle's not going to mean a darn thing to them. All they're going to be doing is saving their swimming pools. Oh, they'll be the first ones to come and sit at your table. But I think the good ones are going to be the ones that are willing to take a loss and put up a fight. Well, then I'll, I'll have to learn to love my enemies, Arthur, like the good book says. I hope so. Because I don't think you're going to be able to trust your friends. Goodbye, Arthur. I suppose in the meantime, you're going to lose money for a principal? Hey, Travis, when it comes to losing advertising clients, these bozos don't know who they're up against. <laughs> I'm going to fight him tooth and nail. I know you are. If all else fails, I might even set less than estimate on him. <laughs> Boy, that could signal the end of organized religion as we know it. <laughs> 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 